Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to show how I built a backrest for my 1400 concourse. Of course I'm not just going to build a simple backrest because I'm going to put a mountain bike shock on it so that it's spring loaded for bumps and I'm going to put this bag on the back but because I'm putting this bag on the back with a backrest um, there's not enough to support the bag so I'm going to have to build a support for this bag also. Okay, I use an SW MoTeC rack uh, just because it's a flat piece of metal. It's got a few threaded holes. It's got a lot of holes in it. Uh, it's a nice modular piece to work off of. I could build a custom rack for this, but it's time and money I don't want to spend. Um, and I already had that. So what I did was uh, I traced a few key areas on here so I can line it back up. And then these two holes and these two holes uh, I marked and I'm going to use those to uh, drill holes into so I can mount this plate to this one and then build my backrest off of that. I've got the plate cut, I've got the holes drilled in it, and I've just got some temporary hardware put in here. Uh, very important, I think it is, to use metric fasteners on a metric motorcycle because your tool kit does not have uh, standard wrenches in it. So if I use these quarter 20s, which obviously are just temporary, I couldn't use my tool kit on it because my tool kit's metric for my metric motorcycle. So off of this, I'm going to build a riser, and I'm going to put a backrest pad on that, and then on that riser, I'm going to attach one end of a shock, and I'm going to attach the other end right there in the center. So I'll go ahead and get my shock and build the mount for the bottom. Hopefully I don't drop anything again. All right, I've got one of the shock mounts on the plate here. I'm going to bolt the shock in place, tack weld the other one on, remove the shock, and then uh, weld it in the rest of the way. And that's so I don't burn up the uh, plastic UHMW stuff that the bushings are made out of. There's the other one. There it is with the shock attached. And what will happen eventually is that this is going to go to an arm on a pivot with a pad and then when you lean back it'll compress the shock and then when the bike bounces it won't be so hard on the passenger and they won't get flung forward into me. As you can see I've got a backing plate here and what I'm going to do is heat it up really hot right there and bend a 90 degree corner on it and the reason I'm bending it instead of cutting a 45 is I want a nice smooth curve on it and I just want to see if I can do it because yeah I could easily 45 a couple of these and put them all together, but that'd be boring. All right, that turned out okay. Um, the gap on the left is a little bit bigger than I thought it would be, but I can still weld across it quite easily, so I'm going to go ahead and weld that in now. Okay, I've got it all welded in, and I actually filled those holes because I changed uh, I changed my mind on how I want to mount them, and I, uh, I did hit it with a real fine angle grinder buffing wheel. But now on this side I'm going to weld a bushing to it so that I can have a pivoting pad instead of a fixed one. I think that'll be a little more comfortable. Alright, there's the bushing welded on. Uh, I'm going to clean up the back better, obviously, but uh, that's a bushing. And then I'm going to take it to a friend's place. He has a mill. And I'm going to make some access notches to get a bolt in there. I trimmed this down from a big rectangular piece into this more of a trapezoid shape. All right, I used a mill and then hit it with a buffing wheel to get those notches in there so I can get to that bushing, which has a piece of brass in it now. And then on the back, I put this nice flat plate so I can mount a GoPro to it, or otherwise it just looks better. I also put a piece of uh, round bar or round stock at the bottom there. I just think it looks better. All right, tonight I'm going to mount the backrest pad here onto my riser, and I've got a plate. It's a... Uh, four inches by three inches and I've welded some tabs onto that and put a bolt through my piece of round stock with the bronze bushing in it or brass bushing actually and uh, I already burned my finger once so I'm not going to take it apart and show you but I will show you once I get those welded on and mounted onto the pad and there's a backing plate attached to the pad. I'm going to assemble that and then figure out what height I need to have it at. Alright, next I'm going to heat right here. And I'm going to use this really poorly welded on piece of pipe 
just to keep these two from twisting, but also so I can just grab this and pull it back. Now I need it to come back, I need a three inch offset uh, from the rack up to the passenger, so I'm gonna make this come back three inches. Then I need a four inch rise, so uh, three, three, four, the angle's gonna be five, so I'll cut these off five inches long once I bend them back. And uh, I'm no math magician, but uh, if I put it on three and keep this level with the bench, it should be about where the wider part of my square is where I need to end up. So uh, a lot of this is by guess and by golly, so we'll try it. Okay, these are the hinges that I made. I made these bullets that are threaded and then I took that same piece of rod I made those out of and turned it down a little bit more to make these uh, and I put a piece of brass inside it and then I took a bolt, a big shouldered bolt and I cut it down and then that goes through there and then I put, whoops, and then I put a washer on there and I thread that bullet on and it looks like this just enough room to turn so when it's welded down that that part that says B will turn and I just gotta figure out where I'm gonna weld to and then weld the I'm gonna weld these on to the riser and then get everything lined up and then weld these on uh, just tack weld I should say and then once I have it all tack welded on I'll remove the bolts weld everything on solid alright and here we have it tack welded in place so that it pivots and it'll stay about right there just kind of bounce along alright so here it is on the bike you can kind of get an idea what it's going to look like alright here it is I got it all welded up I got my crossbar in I uh, just made a little crossbar with tabs to go up to the shock. Uh, it is preload adjustable. You tighten it or loosen it depending on if you want more or less preload. Um, good range of motion. Should work. If not, it's the first one I built like this. I have an idea for another one, but I don't really care to build another one if this one works. So uh, we'll go for a test drive, me and my favorite passenger, and see how it turns out. Okay, this murdered piece of plate was for my fuel cell project, and I cut it out. It was a nice big piece, so I kept it, so it's been drawn on several times. And what I did to make it easier to know what I need to keep with all my lines instead of trying to erase them all, I just uh, solid painted everything red with that king size Sharpie that I don't need. Um, as you see here, I've got the four little cutouts on my SW MoTeC rack, and I've located three holes that will work well. And this plate right here, in conjunction with these uh, butt weld 90 degree pipe fittings I got from McMaster Car, uh, they are going to form with some pipe the base for a luggage support to hang off the back of the bike due to the new backrest. I've got this piece cut out, I uh, showed you that earlier. And that's going to fit, more or less, right there. And then off of that, I'm going to weld some pipe to hold on my big bag. So I'm going to go ahead and fasten this down like that. All right, now I've got the bottom marked. I'm going to go ahead and make my rails for it. Um, what you didn't see me doing was measuring how far back and how far up to go. Okay, and here are all my pieces for the uh, luggage support. I got my plate, I marked where the washers and the nuts go so I don't weld on top of where they need to go. Then I've got some three, no this is half inch, got some half inch stainless steel pipe and my elbows from McMaster car and then some spacer pipe. So that'll go across the luggage and it'll come down and these will weld on at a bit of an angle.
to these and then these will weld to the plate. So all I got to do is weld all that up. But one problem, we're out of argon.